Here's your P1 pick of the day from the Rise Guys Morning Show. Let's go ahead and say hello to the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How's everything up in Greenville? It's great. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm down here in Gainesville. We're getting ready to Gators to go to Rocky Top, one of the biggest games in college football this week. So uh, I knew you was going to say that. <laughs> Can't spell citrus without UT, right? Oh, no. Coach Spurrier, I, I believe uh, Matt sitting here to my right, um, he's a little hurt because uh, – I'm not hurt. Well, I know, but you, you did grow up – Spent all your, your entire life as a diehard Gamecocks fan. Huge Gamecocks fan, Coach, uh, all the way back to uh, Jim Morrison. Raised a Gamecocks uh, fan, loved the Gamecocks. And, uh, man, I, what, what happened? Like, wh- why walk away midway through the season? I got to ask you. I mean, I, I imagine it's in your book, but as a, as a, as a, yeah. f- as a fan of the team. Well, okay. okay, well, it's pretty simple that uh, we uh, – we're heading in the wrong direction. Uh, you know, I had a choice. I could have said, hey, they got to fire me. I ain't quitting. They got to fire me. And then they would have owed me $3 million. So I didn't want to go that path. The other thing you could say, well, I'm finished when this year's over. And uh, if I'd done that, I would have done the farewell tour. I'd been the story of every game, Spurrier's last game here, last game there. I wanted the story to be about the players. But I was finished. I mean, I'd lost my enthusiasm. I tried to fix our defense. Our defense the last two years were the two worst in South Carolina history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Check yeah. it out. And I tried to finish. I, so I was finished. I mean, I was finished as a coach. And I could have lingered around and, uh, you know, finished the year just for the hell of finishing it, which uh, didn't make sense. But yeah. if somehow another interim coach could have turned it around, he would have been the head coach. If sure. John Elliott wins three of six, he might have been the head coach and saved the staff. So when it's inevitable that you're finished, I thought it was time to go. That's where I was at. Something respectable about not wanting to sit there for another three, four months and be a lame duck coach till the first of the year? That's exactly what I did not want to do, be a lame duck coach. Yeah. You know, your buddy Rick Flair is going to be on with us on Friday morning. He's uh, coming to school. Yeah, Rick's a good one. Yeah. Rick's a good one now. Is he still... Does he still go in the ring and tussle with those guys a little bit? He just signs autographs now, Adam. Adam now, coach. He's okay. just there to, to sign autographs okay. and stuff. Um, you know, one thing I will say uh, about you is that you, your your heart has all. You know, whether we want to admit it or not, your your heart always stayed in Florida. And and Rick. Rick's heart always stayed in Florida too, but he would never admit that. He, yeah. he followed you right to uh, right to South Carolina as far as his fandom goes. But don't as as a football coach, and I'm sure a football fan, uh, Coach Spurrier, doesn't it kind of uh, set a little weird with you that every year Rick Flair has a different NFL team that he likes? No, not really. He's got uh, he likes teams where he's got good friends, probably and so forth. Oh, is that what uh, it is? The city, the, dis- yeah. the city decides. Yeah. His good buddies are, and they move around. No I coaches gotcha. move around. I got gotcha. you. And you say my heart was always in Florida. Well, a little bit, but when I worked for South Carolina, that was my team. That was my school, and I, I still love South Carolina. A lot of good memories there. Uh, but now I work for Florida. I mean, it's, you know, when you're a coach, it's a little different than being just a pure alumnus of a school. Sure. Yeah, uh, when you're an alumnus, you stay with that school forever. Yeah. Uh, but as coaches, uh, you know, we go where whoever's signing your paycheck is, is your, where your loyal, uh, loyalty is. Sure. Exactly. But you want a Heisman okay. there, and you, you played there, and you coached there, yeah. six SEC championships, all that. So you got accomplishments there. Now, we broke against oh, the Clemson. Me, they offered me a good job down here. They offered me a good job. I'm a little bit better, maybe the job that I had. And eventually, uh, yeah, living back in Florida was, I think, something my wife and I and all the kids uh, sort of thought we would eventually do. Yeah, uh, But anyway, yeah, I tell you what, I'm proud of the Gamecocks. They're 2-1, and one. pretty good start right now. And they got some rebuilding to do, but uh, Coach my chance doing a heck of a job there. You like, you get along with him? Yeah. You like him? You and oh, Will? Oh, yeah. You yeah, I good? like him. Yeah. And, no. uh, yeah. Getting back to the book a little bit, uh, it. uh, it's just sort of a, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, why'd you do a book? And, and I read somewhere, if you don't tell your story, somebody else will, and they may not tell it accurately. Uh, so it's my story, coaching career, family, and playing career, this, that, and the other, and how fortunate, blessed I was uh, along the way. We're going to get any, any, any stories in there about, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
Bowden or, or maybe even Dabo, some of that. Because I, I know the, you know, look, there was the rivalry, but I don't think there was ever an mm-hmm. eye to eye between you and Bowden. Am I wrong? Talking about Bobby Bowden? No, 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 no. I'm talking Bobby about Bobby and Tommy. I'm talking about Tommy down in Clemson. Tommy. Yeah, no, Tommy Bowden. I only played. I only played one or two games against Tommy. Only two. In fact, I saw him in the airport the other day. Uh, he was going to do his TV show. No, I had a lot more games with Bobby Bowden than I ever did with Tommy Bowden. Sure. I think we had uh, about 14 games with those guys down here because we played them twice in two different years. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Uh, they beat us. Uh, they beat us a little bit more than we beat them, uh, but obviously we won the the one that really counted, which was the '96 uh, national championship game. You go, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you done with coaching? I mean, are, are you done with? Are, are you done with being the, uh, the uh, being a head coach? There you go. I know I'm done being a head coach, yeah. and uh, it's you get to a certain age in life, and you have to recruit in college. Right. You have to recruit. Mm-hmm. So uh, if people think, well, he's finished in a year or two, then probably you are finished. And that, that's sort of what caught up with us at South Carolina. Yeah. I thought we had a good team coming back, but I was dead wrong. We did not have a good team. And it, it was it was clear that I was finished. So uh, uh, yeah. coaching, I don't know if that's something that will happen down the road. Who knows? I, it, it could or could not. You have to. You know why you're so great, Coach? Because you like to jab in there. You jab at Tennessee, Florida State. You just you throw jabs in there, no. and it's great to see. Well, that's usually in the off season, just trying to keep things light and so <laughs> forth. But uh, during the during the season, I usually talk like all the other coaches, as far as respect and the other team's very good and all this, that, and the other. Uh, but occasionally, yeah, throwing something halfway make people laugh uh, in the off season. I, I think mo- more coaches should do that. Who's your favorite player after all these years? There, and I know that's like saying who's your favorite kid, but there's got to be one that you you would love to put on your resume. That that I was his coach. Who was that? Yeah, I have had a lot. I wouldn't say. Uh, Not uh, I wouldn't put the number one out out there, but uh, in the top five, uh, yeah, Danny Warfel uh, is such a wonderful young man. Uh, of course, Shane Matthews was our first quarterback yeah. here. Connor Shaw. Uh, was very good for us there at South Carolina. So, uh, yeah. but but Danny Warfel, he got four SEC championship rings and a national championship ring. So five rings in four years. I, I guess that was pretty good down here. That's true. That's true. The book yeah. is uh, is brand new. Head ball coach, my life in football. Steve Spurrier. You know, coach. Dabo Sweeney has only been on with us one time ever, and he got mad at me because I was <laughs> talking crap about the Gamecocks. He literally hasn't done our show, and guess what? We're their flag ste- uh, flagship station. We play Clemson games, but he won't come on our show anymore because I'm a Gamecocks fan. Right? Yeah, uh, tell him winning, right now. You know what? He's, he's been winning too much. Is that what <laughs> the more coaches win, the more they get uh, you know a little bit more authoritative. Yeah. Uh, but I like Dabo, and uh, I think he's done a super job there at Clemson, and the, their team hadn't played as well as they're probably capable, uh, yeah. but they're still right on pace, uh, possibly to have a really, really big year. Louisville's the team that yeah. <laughs> looks like unbeatable right now. That's coming up in a couple of weeks with Clemson. Don't you yeah. mainly like Dabo because you used to beat him every year? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They didn't uh, – it was sort of <laughs> – I hate to – Sort of reminisce, but it was it was like when I was at Florida and we played Peyton Manning. Uh, for some reason, Tennessee would mess up and mess up and throw interceptions, mm-hmm. and that's what Clemson did. About every time we were beating them there, yeah. uh, they had all kind of turnovers. Heck, they fumbled two punts uh, at Williams Price uh, that last time we beat them there. They they did all kind of bad things, yeah. and uh, that for some reason that's what made us uh, you know win those five in a row. Coach, good to talk to you. All right, good talking to you guys in Greenville, one of the prettiest cities in America up there. No question about it. I, I love going, going up there a lot, okay? That's right. Flair right. country. Thank All you, right, sir. see you guys. Have a good Thanks, morning. Coach. Oh, man. He's done. Boy, he it's like off. talking to Ric Flair, ain't it? They, man. Woo! I like your first question. He goes, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm going to talk now. I yeah. know what you're going to say. <laughs> God, he's great. 
You should coach every team in football. Man, I, 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 it, it, I wasn't trying to be mean, and I wasn't going to take it in a mean way, but I, I, I still don't think that's the answer I was looking for. It's yeah. his answer. That's when you're going to get. You can't sit there and tell Jelly. a bunch of players to commit to you when you're not going to commit to them. You're not going to say, come go to my school, I'm going to be your coach, right, and then yeah. halfway through the season – you're just I gonna don't like walk it away. anymore. Bye. He's one of those guys who like he's kind of a dick, but you don't mind because well, you know. Right. Well, you yeah. ought to commit to a shorter question there. I know. <laughs> Good football coaches, that's the way they are. Let me tell you something about word economy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to call up and say that your show is a kick ass. Keep up the good work. Carolina's number one morning show. I don't know what I'd do without listening to y'all show every day. I'd be bored as hell. 93.3 The Planet.